Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be, and welcome to a very special TV Extra interview of Final Cut. Today I'm joined by an actor who, be honest, I spent a majority of my childhood watching on a weekday basis because the gentleman I am with right now was a certain Sergeant Matt Boyden in the bill, and he is appearing in the new movie, The Lost Adjudicator, with Luke Goss. So, ladies and gentlemen, another dream has come true. Please welcome Tony O'Callaghan. Thanks, mate. I'm brilliant, mate. How are you? Yeah, yeah, you know, ticking on. As we you are. Know what it's like at the moment. We you do, yeah. You can only do the best you can. All right, this is going to be a question that will uh, get the old uh, memory juices going. How did you get started out in acting? Oh, oh God. Uh, See what I mean? That's a, that's a long <laughs> story. I mean, um, it, I'll, I'll simplify it. Um, I, got, I got the bug at school. Uh, there was a, a, a lovely English teacher that took me to one side and said, I, I wasn't very good at school, I wasn't very academic, and I, uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't really excel, let's put it that way. And she took me to one side and she said, I've got a, I've got a little plan for you, what are you doing tomorrow lunchtime? And I went, oh, what do you mean by that? She said, uh, I want you to join us in the library to do a debate, I think you'd be very good Ooh. to do a debating thing. And I went, hey, whatever, you know, <laughs> a bit left field. Um, so she said, there you go, it, she gave me this subject, she said, I don't care whether you believe in it or not. I just want you to stand up for five minutes and put your case. I went, all right. So I did it, you know, instead of playing football or getting beaten up or whatever it is I normally did at lunchtime. <laughs> and I absolutely loved it. And then she said to me, she said, I think there's something in you that's a bit of an actor. Did you know that? And I went, really? She said, I want you to be in the play at the end of term. And oh, all right. And do you know what? Whatever it was, whatever I got, the confidence I got from her standing up and doing the little bit I did in the play, my school time, it, it, it just took off. I'll never forget her name. Her name's Mrs. Pickering. I, I think she's unfortunately long gone now. Um, and I used to I go to school, at a secondary school in Bushy in Hertfordshire, a, a school called Bushy Meads, where George Michael went, funny oh. enough, uh, who... who is a, was was a bless him a lot younger than me, so I, I was there six when he was just starting. But anyway, the, I digress. And I sort of got the bug from there. And but it took me a long time to 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 actually come round to the acting um, properly or thinking about it as a profession. Uh, I did lots of jobs. I, I thought it wasn't for me. I was good enough. I thought um, you know you wouldn't get any work anyway. But I was about in my early twenties, and I suddenly had like a bolt from the blue or whatever they call it an epiphany and I thought no I'm gonna I'm gonna try I'm gonna go for this um you know I I, I had this belief that it's only for people that were well educated and that were um from reasonably posh or middle class backgrounds which I wasn't uh, but I was wrong and and I thought no I can do it I can do it and I, I was working in a factory in Peterborough at the time and um, I went on uh, for a break and I took like four or five days uh, on top of my break and when I got back the guy said the manager wants to see you and the manager said I'm going to give you a verbal warning for being late you you came back after your holiday you know and you came up with a, an excuse that you crashed your car which I didn't because basically I was trying to learn some stuff yeah. for a drama school and um I said, well, do you know, I'm giving him my notice. He said, why, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to go to drama school. And he went, eh? I said, yeah, I'm going. I'm going to do it. He said, have you got in somewhere then? I went, no. <laughs> he said, well, <laughs> and he, he was pretty good about it, actually. He said, well, if you do get in, which is unlikely, uh, give your notice in then. And I went, all right. So I went back and I rung up. The only school I'd ever heard of, drama school, was RADA. And I rung them up. I said, how'd you get in? He said, well, you've left it a bit late, but here you go. You, you send your 10 quid in and you, then they get back to you, do a couple of bits. I said, have you heard of any more schools? Can you tell me of any? He said, yeah, the central. And he gave me a list of four or five. And I applied to those schools and I started auditioning. I drove me Morris Minor down to London and I turned up at Rada. I was shaking with fear, obviously. And I did me bits that they asked me to learn. And the lady came and mentioned one name of the group of chaps that were in the room 
and she said politely to me and the others, thank you very much for coming, but I'm afraid we can't offer you a place this time. And off I went. I didn't get in there. And then I went to Central and I tried and I they called me back, and, but I didn't get in there. And I had one more go and the school was the Drama Centre in London, which is a reputation for being a bit methody and quite serious and intense. And I thought, I haven't got a hope in hell of getting in here because I didn't take myself too seriously, to be honest, and uh, was a bit of a joker and all the rest of it. And I, I auditioned for them, and it was horrendous. I was awful, basically. They asked me to do it 10 different times, 10 different ways, the, the pieces. Mm. And I did as I could. I said, I'm, yeah. And the next thing is a letter popped up about two weeks later saying, we'd like to offer you a place. And I went to drama school for three years, and there we go. Off I went after that into the big, wide showbiz world. Um, didn't do any telly for years and years and years. I did repertory theatre, sort of getting bits in plays all around the country, you know, mm -hmm. which do doesn't really exist anymore. Um, and that's how I started. And I did about 10 years of doing theatres and, and shows above pubs and all that. Um, and my first TV role um, was a, a tiny part as a bookies runner in a kids series called Jockey School. Um, and then the next part, um, which I will never forget, was um, two scenes in Terry and June, which was a sitcom back in the day. And I was very excited because Terry Scott and June Whitford were very big stars, you know. Um, yeah, and there we go. I got little bits in telly, but um, and then I got a um, a supporting role in the bill. Um, I played a crook called um, Danny Moran in an episode, and I had uh, a couple of scenes in that, and I enjoyed it. I thought well, I had a really good bunch of people to work with, um, and a year later, two years later, I was called up to audition for uh, Sergeant Boyden. And uh, there we go. Okay. I didn't realise I was, was going to be on it for 12 years. I, I, I thought this is only going to last the short one. And in fact, um, I, I, they said you, you've got six months on it, you know, just the usual contract. Yeah. And after about three months, I got, I got a letter from the producer saying, listen, thanks for all your hard work as the character Sergeant Borden. We, we actually won't be continuing with that character after the six months. And I went, no. That's a shame, you know, I've got this letter. And I thought, oh, I was hoping to, you know, get a little bit more of a go. Mm. Um, and what, what happened was, um, I think they, Eric Richard, who played Cryer, they put him into another role, of, like an office role, but it didn't really work. And they, they wanted him to come back down being a sergeant. So that wasn't really a part for me. Yeah. Well, I, I sort of kept going and I thought, well, well never mind. And, I, and after a few weeks, one of the, sort of assistant producers said, um, listen, you know, you're finishing your contract. You wouldn't hang on for another month, would you, uh, and, and help us out because we actually, we, we can't write you out quick enough. I went, oh, yeah, of course. And then another month came and then another, would you hang on another month? And so in the end, I was in it nearly a year sort of getting add-ons. And then I didn't hear another thing. <laughs> and I was still in it for 12 years. So there you go. Maybe they forgot that they'd sacked me. I don't no, know. <laughs> they, were too, they were too busy doing, doing over filming. They thought, hold on a minute. Didn't we say we were going to give them only a month's, uh, another, another month's uh, well, wage? Well, I, so, I was so paranoid. You can imagine every time the boss, the, the executive producer, um, I saw him in the corridor, I used to shoot into a door quickly in case he saw me and thought, <laughs> I thought I sacked him. What's he still doing here? You know? But anyway... Anyway, I kept going, and uh, yeah, and and I, I obviously I think they probably got used to me and thought, well, maybe there is a part for him after all, or, or whatever. And uh, yeah, it was it was a great great part for me, the best thing I think I've ever done, and I enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, and definitely one of the most entertaining aspects of the bill, as far as I'm concerned, which we'll get. Oh, to that's very right, obviously. Now, yeah, well, that's sweet to be, but uh, you can only deal with what what the. With the words that you've got, of yeah. course, and you, and what you do is you try and spin it, you know, and and try and 
give it you know some kind of slant to it so that you we're not just policemen we're, we're all a bit different which i think we were yeah def- every- definitely everyone was there were those that were annoying those that were lovable uh polly page was so yeah. lovable Ah, oh, Lisa Gagan. Lisa, what a wonderful so character. Yeah, she was she was lovely. Lovely. Very good actress actually. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, very natural. Uh, very very good actress uh, Lisa Gagan. And I loved working with her. As I did uh, Jeff Stewart who played Holly. I used to work with um Lisa a lot. I used to work with Jeff Stewart a lot. Yeah. Who played Hollis. Um yeah, we were, we were in that sort of custody area quite a lot. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, very good team. I was about to say, uh, what was it like on the bill set? But you've just kind of answered that question already. <laughs> oh, right. Well, yeah. it was very quick, you know. We, yeah. did, we didn't have much time. There wasn't much rehearsal. You turned up, you, the director would go, right, let's let's just do the lines quickly he did the lines yep. and then he said right you stand there you stand there you stand there and in, you come in the door there come to the desk and bloody blah let's let's have a go of it see how it goes you do one little rehearsal and often they turn the camera straight away after that once you knew where you were standing because they were under such pressure you know they had to get all these so many scenes done in a day mm. um it was good though, because the, 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 you were under you were under pressure, but it kind of it stopped you overthinking things. You, I think, like I said to you earlier, acting. You know, sometimes if you do theatre stuff, you, you you've got a chance to to re rehearse and, and muck about with things. It's like doing an oil painting; you add layers and layers to it, change it. Whereas TV, it's like a watercolor; it's quick. Mm. You just do the, it's more a sketch. You know, you just do it, and that's it. There you go. You can't even think it often. We'd, we'd finish a take and the director go, that's fine, lovely, happy with that, moving on. And you'd stand there thinking, oh, God, I'm not sure about that. I, yeah. wish, I, I wish I'd have another go at that. But, but you can't. You have to move on and that's that, yeah. you know. Speaking of moving on, uh, I do actually want to get to this next part because I'm eager to hear your response what? to what I have to say. Um, go on, then. Now, obviously, there's been regulars in the bill who are still, who are still going strong as far as acting goes. Um, for everyone who's listening... Okay. This is this would probably I would class a regular for someone who's been in it for over a hundred episodes. So there's obviously yourself, there's Scott Maslin who played uh, DC Phil Hunter. Oh yeah. There's there's Mickey yeah. Webb, Mickey Webb. Sure. There's Andrew Lancel, Lisa Maxwell as well. She was in it for what felt like forever. Oh Lisa. Yeah. They've, yeah. They've, they've, everyone, including yourself, has done what? well after the bills ended. Are you really surprised at all? Uh, uh, what? As how good how good your career still been after the bills ended? Well, I don't really think about that. Um, I, poor, I, I, you know what actors like they they, they they kind of think that it could be better. Um, I, I I think I don't think my career's been. Um, it's hard to be objective in a way. I would. Think... You're, you're in the middle of it yourself. I, I think I've just. I always think I'm just jobbing actor. I think I've just jogged along. Yeah. I've had a couple of nice little jobs, you know, but I. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not, I haven't got to Hollywood yet, um, but, you know, I, I, <laughs> I, I just jog along with each little thing. And, and I, do you know what, I, I, especially at this stage in my life, I, I don't really mind if it's on TV or if it's just, it's movies, yeah. as long as it's got, you've got a bit of in- interest to it. If it's yeah. something that's got, you can do something with it, you know, that's what interests yeah. me. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, I, I mean, an awful lot of luck comes into it, of course, does, yeah. with with parts and acting. You, you can't. You, I sometimes see these actors being interviewed. And they say, "Oh, I had this plan." Oh, I, I had no plan. I was like a kind of a like a bottle, you know, with a message in it just floating about. <laughs> and you hit a little desert island of work, and then the sea comes and sweeps you off yeah. that little island, and off you go again, you know, until the next job pitches up. So. Uh, uh, I yeah, I, I think I've been reasonably lucky. Um, especially the bill was a great job. Yeah. I mean, twelve years you, you don't expect that. Um, but after um, EastEnders, yeah, that was nice. Yeah, that was, was very different, sort of uh, different animal because they've all worked together, a uh, small cast to, together for years and years. You know, whereas the bill, there were so many guest artists coming into it every day. You, you you ended up working more with the guest artists than you did the regulars. Yeah. It's, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. 
I'm so but glad. Who that... knows? Hopefully, more more things to come. You know, let's see how we go. Yeah, I was going to say I'm glad you mentioned uh, guest stars because I actually have 19 oh. names here of people who have been in the bill and have actually gone on to do. I'll say reasonably well. Some of them have okay. even gone to Hollywood. So I'm going to give you these oh, 19 right. names now, and Go on, then. I'm going to blow you away with some of them because even you will be shocked. Go on. So. Uh, there's Ralph yeah, Powell, who played uh, Miami Vice in Lockstock, and he was actually in Star Star Wars: Phantom Menace. There's Caroline. Who was that? Say, say that again. The first one. Ralph Brown. He was in. Uh... Oh, Ralph Brown. Yeah, yeah. He's brilliant. He, he was in Wiznail, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pa- oh, he was iconic in Wiznail and I. He was. Yeah. The Campbell Carrot. Yeah, oh, wonderful. Go on. Uh, who's the next one? Uh, Caroline Katz, who is in Doc Ma- who was in Doc Martin, yeah. Yeah. She's a lovely girl. Why does she a always brilliant a- actress. Why does she always appear so lovely in every role she's in? I don't know. Maybe she is lovely. I remember she was so young when she came into the bill. Um, uh, and and her and, and Michael, yeah. who she's married to, met on the bill. Yeah. Michael was, was a regular. So Michael Higgins, yeah. and they actually met, you know, and they were, they were yeah. practicing their lines, but of course something else was going um, that, that we all kind of knew anyway. But, um, and uh, yeah, Caroline, wonderful, and she's brilliant in Dot Martin. She is. Really amazing. nice girl. There's obviously the uh, two of the main stars from Birds of a Feather. There's Pauline Quirk and Linda Robson. Now, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Pat Roach has actually uh, been in the bill. And for those who don't know Pat Roach is, if you watch the original Indiana Jones trilogy, He's the big muscular man who always gets beaten up and uh, killed by Indy. He was a Pat Roach. He was like a, a um, he'd been a wrestler or something yeah. in another life, hadn't he? Yeah, yeah. I, re- I remember him. Yeah. Uh, actually, there's a few uh, Coronation Street ones next. There's uh, Sam Aston who plays Chesney. Was he? Was he in the bill? He was, yeah. I've looked through wow. Wikipedia and IMDb, and this is literally yeah. only a small selection of who's been in it. Uh, Brian Kaplan, right. who was married to uh, Gail Plant, turned out to be a serial Gail, killer. Who, yeah. yeah. Oh, he, and again, he's a very nice chap. I, I, yeah, yeah, I know Brian from, yeah. from a previous long time. I did, did a, 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 a commercial training film with him a long, long time ago. He was brilliant in Corrie. What an evil man. Know, My so, God. So brilliant. Uh, Rona Mitra, who actually starred in the bill. She used to do Pepsi Chart Show on a Wednesday, but then she moved to America and did quite well for herself. Wow. I know. Cool. This, this next one will shock you, because even I was shocked. Cool. If I was to say, winter is coming, and this, this this person unfortunately seems to die in every one of his movies that he's in. Oh. Sean oh, Bean. God. Was he in the bill? Yeah, he was in the bill. <laughs> wow. I God, call... oh, yeah. I'd I... love to. Be... Oh, I like Sean Bean. I think he's very good. Oh, yeah. right, okay. Yeah. I should point out to everyone: this is what I've actually looked at on IMDb. So if I, if it is wrong, it's IMDb's oh, right. fault, not mine. Uh, Robert Carlyle, okay. who was in the full Martin. Oh, yeah. Yep, everyone knows. Oh, good God, Robert, he's yeah. yeah, of course Emma I know Bunton. Robert. Yeah, uh, Baby Spice, Emma Bunton. Oh, she must have been very young. She was. She was. She was very young. Yeah. She was about. I think she was. In about she was about ten or twelve, but yeah. Um oh. this one will shock you. Kieran Knightley. Go on. I don't remember that. It really? Is, yeah, Kieran Knightley, yeah. Long very long. Gosh, she's so posh. And she it. must have played a very posh character. She must have. <laughs> uh, Russell, yeah, Russell Brand's been in it as well. Wow. Hollywood God, I didn't know that. Uh, Jack O'Connell, who is actually he's actually quite done quite well for himself. He was in Angelina Jolie's first directorial film, I believe it was called Unbreakable. Right. Yep. And and yep. Carry on. Yeah, yeah. Go on. I'm t- I'm, I'm I'm intrigued now. I want to know who who's the next one. My fav- my personally, my favourite Doctor of all time, uh, David Tennant. Ah, uh, brilliant. Yeah. And you know, I worked a lot before I left the bill. In part of my leaving storyline, I worked with his now wife, um, Georgia Moffat, who oh, yes. is Peter Davidson's daughter. Yeah. I know it's complicated. It is complicated. It's... Peter Davidson's real name is Peter Moffat. Anyway, yeah. Georgia Moffat, who's me to 
to um, David Tennant. Um, we had a big story, and she played the sort of schoolgirl, and I ended up having an. She was underage, and I ended up having a sort of a, a, a dodgy affair. Although Boyden said he didn't know that she was underage, yeah. um, and that was part of the whole the leading storyline. Oh. So um, yeah, so there we go. Anyway, sorry, go on, keep going. Um, I like this quiz. Yeah. It's not really a quiz. It's just a case of if you remember these or not, uh, and your reactions have been. I processed. don't. Well, I, <laughs> I don't remember ever working with David Tennant. I don't think I got. A, 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 sadly, I don't think I got to do a bit with David. But yeah. But who else have you got on the list? I've got four more. Um, Andy Serkis, who played Gollum. Brilliant. Yeah. Very good actor. Uh, Paul O'Grady. Well, we all know Paul O'Grady. Oh, great. brilliant! I remember him in it. Oh, he was something else. Yeah. Paul O'Grady. Uh, He's larger than life. Way yes. back then. Uh, Martin you know, Freeman, who I told you about before we came on, just to give you a little taste. Martin, last yeah. one, I consider this guy to be one of the best actors in Hollywood today. Not yeah. just in Hollywood, but anywhere. Uh, Mark Strong. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Was he in the bill? All right. He was, yeah. All these God. names have been in the bill. All these, all these ones who have still going strong. Some have even gone to Hollywood. I mean, I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Emma Bund- I know some of them aren't quite in Hollywood, but they're still going strong. I mean, I think Sam Astin's yeah. still in, uh, still in Corey. Obviously, Pauline and uh, right. Linda are still doing, still doing the, a bit the of a stuff, fella, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's, so it's a case of I don't. I, the, the question was actually going to be: when you hear these names, are you surprised that the bill was essentially the British version well, of say Neighbours or Home and Away? But basically, you've kind I'm, of already said it. I'm delighted for it. <laughs> I'm not surprised because, well, first of all, the, the, the thing that strikes me when you read out this list of all these actors that have done so well, first of all, isn't it great that the bill was there and yeah. it offered all these parts to people? Mm. You know, unfortunately, it's very hard, you know, yeah. especially young actors, to get a chance. And so it just shows you that every week there were like three episodes of the bill mm. and there were loads of characters. It was. So it gave a lot of work to actors. So there's that. And you kind of think, you know, I'm, I'm delighted that they've they've done well. I am. It just shows you what what's possible. Yeah. And it also shows you how how much luck plays a part in things as well. You know, yeah. I mean, you, you have to have the talent, but you also have to have the luck as well. Yeah. So basically, the bill was essentially the British version of Neighbours or Home and Away or even Blue Healers. I'll give you a little uh, tidbit about Blue Healers, which was another soap, which was uh, I think it was an Aussie soap or New Zealand soap. Hugh Jackman was in that once. Who? Hugh Jackman, you know, Wolverine before he hung oh, up. Oh, yeah, course, the yeah. Australian actor. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was oh, in was Blue he Healers. in that? Yeah, he was in Blue Healers. Oh, right. So oh, a- right. I've never, I think it was shown on the TV here once, was it? Uh, yeah. We get the odd, the odd Aussie thing, yeah. Yeah, it was the I never thing. saw it. It was the Neighbours or Home and Away. It was the soap that literally got forgot about because we always had Neighbours or Home and Away. So, yeah, we didn't really, uh, yeah. didn't really get noticed that much. But it's a bit of a shame, actually. So. And I did actually tell you this before we came on. You're the ninth highest person in terms of appearing in total episodes, which is 700. Uh, one thing I well, was, that's mate. Yeah. One thing I always loved about yeah. that was his very sarcastic, his very sarcastic nature. I've got some examples here. He says, "When the Met employed Reg Hollis, they deprived a village of its idiots." And uh, <laughs> that's a great line. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, I like that. I wish I'd written that. Yeah, I like that line. There's, an, there's another one when you were asked by, I can't remember who it was, he says, did the prisoner hurt himself? And you went, unfortunately not, sir. <laughs> oh, he was very droll, wasn't he? He was a bit droll, boy. So how much of that did you actually love? And, and, how did, and how did he get away with saying all that? Because if it was real life, he wouldn't get away with it, would he? Well, it's kind of, I, I mean, there has to be a bit of license, doesn't it? I mean, it's not, as the police will tell you, it's got nothing to do with real police work. And police, you know, I did a bit of, when I joined the show, I did, I spent um, a couple of days up at my local Wood Green police station. And it, it, it's kind of slightly boring, actually. Nothing much happens. And then the door bursts open and a load of people suddenly come in, you know, they some chap came in who tried to set fire to the car of um, his girlfriend's, new lover or something i don't know what was going on but you know but it's hours and hours of nothing and a lot of it's paperwork so obviously they have to kind of use a bit of license you know and uh and what i think also happens it's funny it came into my head when you were talking about boyden's sarcasm yeah you you, you do a scene and you put a little bit of sort of sarcasm 
And then the writers get hold of that and they suddenly decide that that's what you are. And you, and you, they, they sort of, one thing leads to another, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so that built up over a, 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 a time, all that slightly sarcastic thing. And yeah. Very droll. He was a man of few words. He wasn't very charming. I remember, I know that. I don't think he was, I, I consider myself very charming. Um, that's why I'm not like Boyden at all, of course. Good and, uh, you know, <laughs> But uh, he, he was, yeah, he was a man of few words and very, and very abrupt yeah, and quite, yeah, yeah. Um, could be quite gruff, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say your career after the Billers. Well, there's only there's only a few words for it. It's been very British. So obviously, right. yeah, you did Family Affairs, which was a soap on Channel Five. You've done Hobby City, yeah. you've done Doctors, EastEnders, which you've already mentioned. You've done Shameless. Yeah, you definitely kept yourself busy then. Y- yeah, I mean. Well, yeah, reasonably. I, you know, you can always be busier. Um, yeah, it, it, and that, and that, you, you've read those out. It sounds like that was all done in a few weeks. That's over a it good wasn't. few years. It but, wasn't. but yeah, I was uh, reasonably lucky enough, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, all a bit English. I, I'll admit that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there is a question I don't really get to ask very often, but I absolutely well, can't get to ask with this. it. Uh, obviously, you've, See, been, you've been in more than a few soaps. In your time, you've been in yeah. Family Affairs, you've been in Doctors, you've been in EastEnders. Is there any plans to go into Emmerdale, Coronation Street, Coronation Street, sorry, and Hollyoaks to complete what I like to call the legion of having starred in all the British shows there is to star in? Wow, wouldn't that be great if I could manage to get a bit in all the soaps? That'd be, yeah. I'd love that. That'd yeah. be great fun. Yeah, the, the one, the one that's, that I really, if you going back to when I was a kid and I used to play soccer and cricket out on the street you know mm. and especially in the summer the windows used to be open and when coronation street started um and there's been a lot of publicity about it recently isn't it 60 years or something yeah. like that. and i remember as a young kid when i heard the coronation street theme tune i knew my mum was going to come to the window and shout because it was time for me to come in for, for tea or whatever and so i, I always say it's kind of iconic that trumpet music it's got several kind of meanings in my head a, it's probably the most famous soap, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's the most famous soap in the world. I don't know. Um, but also, it heralded, it was the end of uh, playing soccer, whatever it was, especially in the summer, when I heard that music. Because you could hear it. Because everybody, you could hear all the different houses where we lived in North London. You could hear that music. Um, mm. do, 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 do. And you think, oh, blimey, time to go in. <laughs> That's it. Play time yeah, but yeah, then. probably, I... I Corrie would be great. I'd love to do a bit in Corrie. That would be... I mean, it's such an iconic series, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, sure. Wouldn't it be great? Because I think... Is it, uh, you... Go on. I was going to say, I think I'm right in saying you're the only person that I actually know of who could literally do that because I don't think many people who have, been, who have actually done Family Affairs have actually been in any of the others. So, technically, sir, you have a chance oh. of history here. Oh, right. Oh, God, maybe I need to pull my finger out and try and get in a Guinness Book of Records or something. Maybe I could, you know, get in there. I'm sure there's actors that must have been in every show. Yeah. I, I don't know, but wouldn't it be great? Yeah, I'd love that, especially Corrie. Yeah. I'd love to be in Corrie. Right, get your agent. Actually, I wouldn't mind being in Emmerdale either. Come to that. I wouldn't mind doing something. Some grumpy farmer. Yeah. I could give it a go. Seriously, get on your phone to your agent after this interview and say, right, get me a part in Emmerdale. Yeah, you've Hollywood. got me stinking right now. now. You've got me. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to get some emails off straight away. Yeah. Come on. Right, let's... Uh, you, you, you can do with some sarky farmer in, in Emmerdale or in whatever. Yeah, Perfect, actually. Um, now, obviously, 2020 has not been a great year, but you've got a movie out, which is called The Lost, the Lost Adjudicator. I think it's... Is it The Lost Adjudicator or Lost Adjuster? It's one or the other, isn't it? It's uh, a Lost Adjuster. It's to do with... Um, yeah, sorry, and I, I think Lost... I'm not an expert. It's to do with... Um, uh, people, a uh, loss of justice comes around when it's an insurance claim. They come and and figure out, you know, what what, what it is that you've lost is actually worth, like if you lose your car or whatever. Yeah. I think that's uh, that's where the title comes from. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, nice. It was nice. I did I did a film, a, a bit in a film for the for the people that did this one before, which was all about um, uh, witchcraft in in kind of North oh, London. I remember uh, this, and I played. A, yeah, it's called Coven, and and I played a school teacher in it who, who um, it, it was friends with the the, the the main character, but he he 
kind of sensed that there was some something else going on, you know, that, that, that something wasn't like. And then they came up with this new film, which is a, a sort of comedy uh, around, uh, based around Christmas time, of course. And it, what it is is that um, because uh, pe- that they find out because people keep pe- get burgled. Twi- apparently, people get burgled twice a lot. When when you're burgled, you often get burgled again because you know you you're not prepared, and they know how to enter the building, and they wait throughout, and they and they have another go to see if they can nick something else. And a lot of that's been going on. Um, but they find it's kind of linked to this loss adjuster going around who, unbeknownst to himself, his um, wife is is revealing information to some gangsters mm. about his sep- visits, and that's where it comes from. And I am one of the victims in The Loss Thank Adjuster. You. I play a um, yeah, slightly different uh, part for me. It, he's um, a bit on the um, posh side, a bit sort of middle class, and Mr. Henderson, he's called. And he's a bit reactionary, and he lives in quite a nice house somewhere in posh part of North London, Highgate or somewhere like that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he has, he has a few words to say to to Luke Goss, who plays the character of the loss adjuster. Mm. <clears throat> and I think I think his wife is played by Kim Munch, who of course yeah. was in Comedy, I think. Yes, she was. Yeah. Was, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned um, Kim Marsh because there's obviously Luke Goss who, as we know, was in Bross a long time ago. Kim Marsh in it. Martin was, Kemp's yeah. in this. And we, we all love Martin Kemp. I still consider Martin yeah. Kemp one of the best baddies that EastEnders has ever seen. Oh, in EastEnders. He was. Yeah. Speaking of EastEnders, well, uh, yeah, Lorna Fitzgerald's in this as well who played uh, one of Max's daughters as well. That's right. Yeah, I didn't get to meet Martin, or uh, because of, obviously with the film, you just uh, turn up for, for the uh, the uh, location, and you and you were. I only worked with um, Morris with Luke for the, the couple of scenes that that I did in it. Um, but yeah, they got a very good cast together mm-hmm. for it, and and it's very, it's actually very well written, and it's, uh, and uh, quite amusing, amusing script. I. I Unfortunately, uh, I haven't had a chance to see it yet. There were there were all these plans. They're having showings of it, and they keep getting cancelled because of this yeah, this COVID. COVID yeah. business. I was supposed to go on Saturday to tell you the truth. There was a showing at a cinema and a question and answer session. Of course, that's that's unfortunately a um, bit of dust now with uh, tier three here in London. So we so I'll have to wait to see it. But um, it's got some good reaction and and it's got a very good cast. So. That's good. Is it out now? Uh, just in case anyone listening wants to watch it, it's out. Yeah, uh, uh, how how you access it? I think you you can download it. I think and stuff like that. I think it's available. I think it may be. I think it may even be available on DVD already. I don't know that bit. It, it was supposed to be having a release in cinemas, and it will, but That's obviously okay. not until all this business has calmed down a bit next year. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so that that's the that's the latest thing, really. Yeah, and I enjoyed that. That was good fun. And- All right, so this next part is basically what I ask everyone. I think it's actually quite relevant in the current climate we're in. So, um, so obviously, like you've already mentioned, cinemas have been shut down for various reasons, and yeah. a lot has come out streaming wise. So, do you think that is the future of movies, which is basically being released on streaming services, or do you think cinemas still have a place? Well, I think they certainly still have a place. I think for a certain sort of movie, and and finances will probably demand that that's yeah. there because obviously people have to find a way. When these things are funded, you know these particular some sorts of movies, they they ha- they have to recoup their money, and and that will largely be through showing them in theatres and, mm-hmm. and cinemas. Yeah. Um, having said that, of course, from adversity, amazing things come about, and. I, especially, I, f- I find it fascinating with young actors and producers that they now find a way where money isn't the object. They find a way of making things. You know, they're, they're shooting movies on their phone, and it looks fantastic. I mean, I, my, my phone's a bit crappy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do it. But, you know, wh- however they do it, I don't know. And they edit it, cut it, and everything. And they look, look amazing. And that is really exciting. And so, yeah, th- that could be the future too. Yeah. Because obviously you're, you're not constrained by budgets in the same way. Yeah. It's got its constraint. You can only do so much, uh, you know, shooting something on a phone, obviously. Yeah. 
but needs must, you know, needs must. And, and yeah, I think that's very interesting what's going on. Um, having said that, let's hope things get better next year, eh? When it this will. vaccine rolls up, let's yeah. hope. Oh, by the way, there's some it. normality. I was going to say, you know, we've been bored. Go on. I was going to say, the, there's a rule going round. I'm not sure if anyone's heard of this. The, one, the first major rule of 2021 is you do not talk about 2020. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a very good it's, idea. Yeah, it's kind it's, of like oh, Fight Club. You, don't, you know, the first rule of Fight Club, you don't yeah. talk about Fight Club. first rule of 2021, you don't talk about 2020. Let's talk about it. Yeah, let's not go there. Yeah, quite right. Yeah, I do feel that next year there is a there will be a real feeling of move. I know we've still got all this stuff to deal with and it's yeah, not yeah, going yeah. away and we're now being locked down in tier three here at the moment and all the rest of it but you kind of think there is a feeling i think psychologically with 21 a feeling of hope and a bit of light at the end of the tunnel and, a, and return to a little bit of normality it's like we've been at the war or something it must have been cool. like that in second world war or you know getting bombed and all the rest of it you think is there any that it, it, it's a similar kind of feeling or, or situation. So yeah, I'm I'm hopeful. I am hopeful. As am I, sir. Uh, oh, biggest <laughs> biggest piece of advice that you would give to someone who basically is kind of feel like feeling like they're getting nowhere with their entertainment career and they're thinking of giving it up. What would be the key piece of advice you would give, considering you've had got a lot of advice to give? Well, I don't know how, what kind of worth my advice would be, but first of all, if you're talking about someone who wants to get to be an actor and to, and to go into the business, yeah, you've got to have a sense of humour. Oh my God, you really do. Don't take yourself too seriously. Take the work seriously. You've got to work your socks off. You've got to do the very best you can at everything, however simple or uh, it is or how lowly you think it is you've got to be the best you can in it but do not take yourself too seriously i think i would give that advice um and look if i can carve out some meager career out of it anybody can because as i told you earlier i was working in a factory and i thought i had no hope of getting and i suddenly got a kind of a flash of light or a pivot i thought yes i can you know, I've got no theatre background in my family, which is working class family. My dad was a builder and my mum worked in a shop and all the rest of it. I thought, yeah, I can. And I and I kind of went for it and I tried and to, to get into a drum school. I was I, I was petrified going for the auditions. Didn't think I was sort of good enough. All of that stuff that you have, doubts and all the rest of it. But I, I, I managed to get into one of them and, and then things rolled on from there so if i can do it anybody, anybody can do it yeah. that's for sure all right we've uh, talked about tony o'callaghan the actor and the lovable sergeant matt okay. boyden but what what <laughs> sort, this, sort of lovable go on yeah, very, i found him very lovable i was i just laughed basically oh. everything that came out of his mouth um but what about tony right. o'callaghan the person what are his interests and passions outside of acting Oh, right, if okay. If you'd like, um, I, well, some, I, I was going to say, what, if yeah. you like, some people have just said, well, acting is my only passion. So if you want to use that line, you can. Well, I can't pretend that's true. So I, 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 I could say acting is my only passion, but that is not true. Um, there's a couple of things that, that come along, second best, I'd say. Um, I'm mad on old cars. I love vintage cars. I don't have a huge collection. I have an old MGB GT at the moment, um, oh, but I've had several new cars. And I, yeah, that, that is one of my uh, passions. Um, I am an avid supporter of Tottenham Hotspur Football Club, uh, and they're doing not too badly at the moment. I'm not a season ticket holder, but I've followed them ever since I was a kid because my dad took me. Um, I love all sorts of music. I, I, I'm, I'm very eclectic. Um, uh, from uh, classical jazz all sorts I really love music um, I think that that's about it and I, I, I'm quite very very keen on tennis as well not that not great player but I do enjoy my yeah, tennis yeah. Well, got to so they, they would be my, my passions really that's fair enough then um, I would say what, what are your career highlights but I would say literally aside from Matt Boyden everything that you've done has been a highlight 
I've just been very privileged and, and happy to, to be in it, you know, uh, to be in it and, and think myself very lucky. That I had yeah. the opportunity, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, you meet some really interesting people along the way. That's the thing. Mm. You do. Um, have you got any other projects coming up that you can uh, let us know about, aside from any that we might have already discussed by accident? We've gone a bit sort of quicksand quagmire with projects. Uh, not really. Everything came to it for me anyway. I was lucky to get the loss adjuster done. That, yeah. that was that that was still made during lockdown. So goodness knows how they managed to 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 get that made and done. Um, so no, I, I'm just hopeful. Who knows? Maybe Corey next year. That'd Who be knows? good. Keep an eye out for this man in co- if you watch Coronation. Yeah, you never know. You never know. Yeah. Um, no, no idea what, what what next year brings. Yeah. Just two well, more questions. Well, well, so yeah. Um, yeah. what, what would you like the future to hold for you? So good health, more say more of acting, uh, maybe even get to play yeah. Andy Murray in a tennis game, maybe. Yeah, and obviously my and also my I have a daughter Molly. You know she's uh, our only daughter, and she's supposed to be going to uni this year. Well, that didn't happen yeah. because of one thing, and then she took it at me. So I'm, I'm obviously keen that she finds a path that she would like to follow. Pro- probably not acting. I have to, I'm relieved to say, um, I think that I think it's a very hard thing to get into, especially nowadays, very yeah. difficult. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm quite keen to, to get her up and running. Um, and, and who knows? I'm, I'm, I'm feeling very optimistic about next year. I've been very hopeful. As am I, sir. On things many, on many fronts. Yeah. I think things will change quite especially around about springtime there'll be a there'll be a, a kind of a a key change in things i i do feel that i feel that as well <laughs> so last question um yeah have, have you got any social media where people can follow you if they're interested in your career and you as a person do you know i've not got into that maybe it's my age i don't know i i really couldn't be bothered with facebook don't blame and, you. i don't I know blame actors you, do it's not really my cup of tea. Uh, I, I always think of it as a as a youth thing, although I know a lot of actors do it, and I think it's probably very wise for your career and all the rest of it. But I don't, you know. Um, people tend to they write to me via um, uh, the agent, you know, which you can yeah. get on the website. I'll tell you my agent, and people write to me occasionally, and that's very nice. But no, I, I'm not into that, you know, Instagram and Twitter and all that. It's not my Thing. can't be bothered with it Don't i'm not me. very good with technology anyway in fact it's a miracle i'm talking to you now <laughs> neither am i this is, sir i'm not this as far as it goes <laughs> this is as far as it goes yeah and on that uh, shocking re- revelation that us two are absolutely useless with technology ladies and gentlemen i give you sergeant <laughs> matt boyden tony o'callaghan dean thanks very much it's been a pleasure talking to you the honor is all mine sir <laughs>